The win of the round belongs to the Gold Coast Suns, who just destroyed the West Coast Eagles. Were too tough, too hard, too skillful. Uh, ben Ainsworth kicked a couple. Raul, he was the story last night, kicked two. Sam Day, great to see him back. Uh, Raul, well, and Miller, plenty of the foot in. Shuey, probably one of the few in Gaff to hold their heads up high for the West Coast Eagles. But their coach, the Gold Coast Suns coach, Stewie Jew, joins us. Stewie, congratulations. Is that the biggest win of your coaching career? Yeah, thanks, Lordy. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, certainly by margin and, and the position we're in, you know, we were really disappointed with round one and to respond was was really good because our, our, we were, you know, we know over the pre-season what we've been working on, but we certainly didn't execute that a long time ago. But um, to do it over the four quarters was exactly what we needed. Stewie, I heard Matty Rowell after the game and he said the last three weeks has been about belief. Believe in yourselves, know how good you can be. And it looked like you went after... Uh, West Coast and said, we're not going to be pushed pushed around here tonight. Uh, was that a real focus over the last couple of weeks about you know, the, the mindset you need to take into the game? Yeah, I think definitely, um, you know, obviously given there's such a fantastic footy club and and where we were sitting on the ladder with our, our percentage, I think the external um, narrative was very much about, you know, uh, wanting to compete and, you know, hope for, a bit of hope and this and that. So for three weeks we talked about winning and, and making sure that our guys believe that if they brought everything that they're good at, played their role, that we can actually win rather than just make up the numbers or make it a good game. Um, we thought that was really important to sow that seed from a fair way out. And the bigger bodies too, Stewie, no doubt about that. Rao and Weller, Miller, Greenwood, uh, Day, just bigger bodies. Is a lot, it makes you lot, look a lot tougher and stronger. Yeah, yeah, good point, Billy. You know, the guys have done a fair bit of work and... We've been proud of the way they put in over the shutdown period and we knew they were putting the work in and it does help, you know, you look at, at Matt and Noah and even and even Butters down back yeah. as first year players. Um, you know, they've got a bit of size about them and, and they don't accept tackles and they, they fight through, which is really important. Stewie, since the, the club came into the AFL in 2011, there's been a lot of false promises and a couple of false dawns. I know you're not responsible for a lot of it, but is this the turning point? Is this the official start to what this club is all about? Yeah, I mean, it needs to be Damien, and, and that's what we're talking about with this group. We, we can write the history of the club, and, you know, a lot of us are, are at this club for the lure of the fact that we can be involved in a lot of firsts. Um, you know, a lot of clubs have, have history and a long history, and that's that's fantastic, but that can weigh people down as well. So we, you know, we're going to make sure that we write the story the right way, and, and this group we certainly feel are more than capable. So, um, you know, all we can control now is what what story this looks like from here on end. And and we took a small, small step, but an important one last night. Port Adelaide showcast their young talent last night. Matty Rowell, Noah Anderson, really good player. Billy Zeeven can uh, compare him to Joel Salwood as a young player. Just take us behind the scenes of how good Matty Rowell is. Yeah, and, and Matt, Matt and Noah gets um, lumped together, I guess, by their draft number, but also their close of friendship. And I think the important piece that the public will get to know over a period of time is um, it's not by luck or chance that they're as good as they are. They they put the work in. I haven't seen any players come in and, and love footy as outwardly as these guys and they've always got a ball in the hand. They're pushing each other. So, you know, when you see siblings be successful because they've grown up mm. pushing each other to be better, um, clearly these guys have spent a lot of time together and, and they've reaped the benefits of that because... There's no ego with them. They're happy for each other's success and, and they love love playing with each other and they know where each other are. You know, like you can see it in training quite often. They're not just kicking to their mate. They just know where they need to be. Dewey, the other one's Isaac Rankin, who we haven't seen and he wasn't selected again last night. Where's he at and is there any concerns about his long-term health? No, I think, um, you know, where he's at, we've, we've been very, very conservative to, to not make it a long-term health issue and... You know, on the back of the shutdown, you know, we did a, a power of work, but we, we just feel that we need to see a lot more of him hitting his top end speed in a training controlled situation before he gets into a an uncontrolled environment that a game is because he, he doesn't have a filter, Isaac, and he, he knows one speed and that's flat out. So we want to make sure that he's absolutely cherry ripe for a long career with us um, rather than rushing him in. And, you know, he, he's on board with that. We're certainly excited, but we don't want to... Uh, I guess, make that the focus, the short-term stuff. And when we say short-term, you know, we, we expect him to play in the next 
you know, two to three, four weeks. So, you know, he's a chance to play in the match sim against Adelaide on Sunday. So, but in a controlled environment as a first step, but we're, we're certainly excited to add him to the mix. I'm not sure there's ever been a first or second gamer who's got three Brownlow votes, but I think Matthew Rowell gets three Brownlow votes last night. Matty Rowell, <clears throat> best on ground, Lockie Weller second, Took Miller third, and as Bill said, big body Hugh Greenwood gets the fourth. Hey, Stewie, we really appreciate your time this morning. Uh, before you go, though, a, a bit of chatter on Friday that filtered down here about this scratch match between yourself and the West Coast Eagles and Gold Coast having to uh, provide players to West Coast to actually uh, uh, field a team. And that, A, have you had the scratch match? And B, were blokes willing to volunteer to go and play with West Coast? Yeah, so I spoke to Simo and he said they've roughly probably got 13. I think we had 19. Um, and look, it, you're, you're with a situation. Do we go 13 v 13 or do we make it 15 or 16 and, and make it a little bit more realistic? So we spoke to our players and we said, look, we're going to play three quarters. Um, so let's let's do a bit of a roster system. Um, and we talked to the other coaches. So, you know, the West Coast coaches around, where were their gaps? And, and we were able to fill them. So it happened. And, and importantly, like... You know, for our guys, it's important, and, and even Simo yesterday talking about how good that opportunity was to play against another AFL team in, in this environment. And I think for the players not playing AFL, it's, to get that competitive outlet on the weekend was was great. But yeah, they uh, we had guys play for them at, at different times. <laughs> good on you, Stewie. Nice to catch up with you, and all the best for the rest of the season. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate that. Good on you, Stewie. Jew joining us there from the Gold Coast.